Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Clavette, and I'm here to bring you the first video of a new series called High Byte Intelligence Hub Tips and Tricks. This series will focus on quick and concise videos to highlight key functionality to make the most out of your data operations. Today we'll be talking about data conditions. Conditions is a segment of the Intelligence Hub that enables users to manipulate the data as it flows through the configuration to its output destination. The first type of data conditioning that we'll be talking about is aggregates. With aggregates, this enables users to summarize or calculate values from raw data streams over a specified period of time. This can be either a fixed window, such as your shift, shift time, or a sliding window, such as every hour. As we know with industrial data, there's many different use cases, spanning from asset maintenance, operational monitoring, quality improvement, all the way to traceability. Each use case has its own unique consuming systems and unique data needs. This enables users to summarize data into usable information that's critical for scaling out analytics and data operation projects. The second condition we'll be talking about today is deadband. Deadband enables you to apply a minimum change filter to reduce noise in your data operations. This can be tied to high resolution sensors that might fluctuate in a expected amount throughout your daily operations. This is extremely powerful when you tie this mapping to a on change expression in flow execution. Let's hop into a demo and talk about these a little further. All right, we are logged into our Intelligence Hub environment. We have two connections pre-configured for this demonstration. So let's start by importing a data tag to apply to our condition. So I'm going to go to a tank and just import a temperature um, data tag. And we'll also import a shift start and end time. Now I'm going to go over to condition and create a new condition. So we'll call this tips and tricks and call it aggregate at the end. For type, I'm going to start by showing you the aggregate. And now I need to map my input from OPC, so that temperature tag, to this sources panel. Now this can be a, you can run multiple data tags in this sources panel, uh, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to stick with one. The next setting we need to determine is how often this data tag is scanned for this condition aggregate. So I'm going to accept the scan interval of one second as the default, um, and our next configuration that we need to determine is if this window is going to be a sliding, meaning every minute or every hour, or do we want to have a fixed window? Fixed window is useful when you have data tags um, or, or know of times when particular cells or work operations are going to be running. This can align with a shift, for example. Um, these, this configuration needs to be an ISO 8601 or epoch millisecond timestamps. This can be powerful if you have data tags um, in that proper format available through your input systems. So here I can use my reference panel and map the shift start time to the start window and then likewise with the shift end. And so as these data tags are, are changing through your daily operations, um, you don't need to worry about updating anything on the Intelligence Hub as we're using dynamic referencing here. For this demo, I'm going to use sliding window as our, uh, as our source here. Um, and what that means is whatever you specify for your window interval, so in this case every minute, we're going to have our aggregates um, derived from that window. Um, the final configuration that we need to determine is our storage interval. Uh, and really this is where the buffered data and the calculations are buffered and stored to disk. So locally to your Intelligence Hub runtime directory. Um, you just need to ensure that this interval is higher than your window interval. So it looks like we are all set there to hit submit. Now that I hit save on our condition, the sliding window has started and the temperature tag is being scanned every second to start building that initial window interval. Note that I chose to start with a small window of one minute so I could have a data set built in a quick manner. If you selected a longer window, such as one hour, you would need to wait for that window to complete to have a complete data set and in order for that data points to be accurate. Also note that this was recorded in version 2.3 where we do not have a enable disable button, but that will be added in version 2.4. But since I've hit saved, our data condition is running and we would be able to see those data points under the condition type in our reference panel. 
So as you can see here, I have my raw, min, max, average, delta count that I can apply to my various data sets to make this data useful. I have a model pre-configured um, with the temperature current and then average, min, max, and then the raw values. So let's uh, create an instance and start associating these data points. So I'm going to start by uh, leaving my reference panel type as input and mapping the direct temperature uh, tag to the temperature current attribute. Next, I'm going to change type to condition and expand out our ag aggregate configuration and start mapping our values here. So let's start with average, then we'll go to min, max, and then let's also associate the raw values so we can take a look at that as well. Um, the other two that I'm not mapping here, delta and count, um, should be self-explanatory. But let's hit submit here and do a read instance and take a look at our values here. So currently the temperature is 16.2. We can see that we have a calculated average. Uh, we can see the min is 16, max 17.5, and then all our raw values of the specified time period. Now let's create our dead band condition. So back under condition, I'm going to create a new condition. Call it tips and tricks dead band. And select dead band as the type. So here I'm going to map my temperature tag to the sources panel. Um, and for my absolute dead band value, I'm going to leave this as 1. So what this means is the temperature reading needs to fluctuate uh, of a value of 1 plus or minus for it to be a valid dead band condition. So let's hit submit here and we'll tie this all together with our flow. Let's navigate to flow, create a new flow. We'll call this tips and tricks flow. Click next. I'm going to map my instance to my source and for my output let's select um, an MQTT output. We'll click next here. I'm going to leave this as just the default of every second always and pop up my MQTT Explorer here. So there we can see under highlight conditions my data payload um, being updated every second. So that's great. I just want to show you that you can see this timestamp here is changing every second before we apply our dead band filter here. So I'm going to minimize and change my mode to on change. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my reference panel, go to condition, dead band, and map this um, temperature dead band value directly to the expression field. So what this is going to do is as this scan interval runs every second, it's going to evaluate the dead band condition to see if that threshold of one is met. So I'm going to hit save here, hop back over to my MQTT Explorer. And you can see that my timestamp is uh, is not updating every second. Oh, there it goes, because it looks like it went from um, 16 to 17.5. Um, so as you can see, that dead band is, is doing its thing. It's monitoring and, and controlling when that flow output runs, assuming that threshold value is met. In summary, we just covered how to build both aggregate and dead band conditions using Highbyte Intelligence Hub. Aggregates can be used to buffer raw data values over a specified sliding or fixed window to help derive values such as min, max, or averages over the specified time. Aggregated values can be extremely useful to complement a wide variety of use cases when working with operational data. Deadband values can be used to specify an absolute change value to help deal with sensors that may fluctuate at an expected rate. Deadbands can be Dead band conditioning can be extremely powerful when mapping to your on-change flow trigger to help better control data outputs. You can expect to see more data conditioning functionality added in future releases. If you like what you saw, feel free to visit our website to schedule a live demo or request access to our free trial of the Intelligence Hub. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.